Welcome to Pulau, Pai, and Podcast, a conversation between Aparna Swarup and Susan Dobson, hosted by the Canada-India Research Centre for Learning and Engagement, or CIRCLE for short. CIRCLE is an interdisciplinary nucleus in Canada for cutting-edge research on India and the Indian diaspora to showcase, advocate, catalyze, and foster an equitable, respectful, and sustained exchange of knowledge between Canadian and Indian scholars. I'm Emerson, a student writer with CIRCLE and third year International Development Studies undergraduate at the University of Guelph. Aparna Swarup is a visual artist, painter, and photographer currently working in Delhi. While she initially worked primarily in oil, today her work spans mixed media and photo-based practices. She has exhibited extensively internationally in both solo and group exhibitions with big sponsors like Mila in Tokyo and South Africa. Her works are part of museum and private collections. She is also the brand ambassador for luxury resort Suniva in the Maldives. She is joined in conversation by Susan Dobson, a lens-based artist and professor at the University of Guelph. The artists discuss Aparna's photography exhibition, All I See is Frames, which was curated and hosted at the University of Guelph in October 2023. Aparna's exhibition came to fruition during a six-week stay in Guelph with her husband, Vikas Swarup. Vikas, an author and former Indian diplomat, was the inaugural global thought leader in residence at the University of Guelph from September 13th to October 24th, 2023. What follows is a casual conversation between Aparna and Susan in Susan's office during the last moments of Aparna's visit to Guelph. They discuss art, photography, and culture while sharing bites of pulao and apple pie. In the office again, the place where I first met you, was it like three weeks ago? Yeah, oh, three weeks? Yeah, almost three weeks actually. and. Um... I came here with my husband uh, mid-September and I think um, and I had he he's here as uh, the inaugural uh, global thought leader for University of Guelph and um, so I had actually when I was coming I was like you know okay I'm going but uh, what will I do there and uh, this much I knew that you know I'm not going to um, waste my time uh, you know looking for sales and shopping and the usual mundane stuff I knew you know who gets a chance to be in a university especially uh, in our age you know so trying to be a learner so I said this is great Uh, then I um, met Martin and then Martin was raving about you and I I was just waiting for you to return and when I come to your beautiful office I fell madly in love with this office and of course the whole personality that Susan is. So thank well, you, I was Susan. embarrassed to have you into my <laughs> office. <laughs> Since, uh, full of stuff. Uh, I was When I knew that you were going to come see me in my office I was quite horrified because I'd had all these slides returned from an exhibition I'd had and uh, there are 24, I just counted the other day, there's 24 bins of slides uh, that I had in a big mound in the middle of an exhibition space. Um, this was, in I think, Toronto. a slide, uh, the, the slide tray exhibition was the title? Yes, yeah. Yeah, slide, uh, slide lecture was slide the, lecture. the exhibition yeah. in Beautiful. Toronto, yes. So they just dumped everything on the floor, in the middle of the floor, and these bins were too heavy for me to move alone. So uh, it's a bit of a labyrinth in my office. So I really appreciated you coming in as an artist and understanding that this is, I'm surrounding myself with the creative remnants of, yes. uh, of an exhibition. I think uh, the beauty of mundane is it becomes extraordinary and especially for people like me I'm a painter as you know primarily trained painter and then took to photography uh, you know later in my life so when I see for me it's a composition when I see it's not like uh, you know like when I met Martin uh, who had so film who was giving me the tour you know very graciously he pointed out to stuffs and apologizing and saying oh my god it's a mess and this and that. this is this is the beauty of uh, 
you know, a space. And these are the things that yeah. inspire and that exactly what your office did to me. The tiles actually, uh, for me, were artworks, actually. Yeah. 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 And uh, sorry, the tiles, I'm saying the slides. Artwork, uh, beautiful artwork. And the fact that you've loved them, you know, you've collected them with such love. And that means you've, the artist in you has really appreciated them. And same for me, you know, every space here that I see, I was just totally in awe of. Reminded me of college days and uh, I went to St. Martin's and this is how I could, you know, feel and smell of St. Martin's here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you, I was so glad you felt that way and that you could see even in the paint drips on the floor, you could see that artists had yes. worked here and you yes. could appreciate that. Um, so I knew we were connecting right away because right away. I love those things too. And in fact, you took quite a few photographs yes. in my office yes. as well. Yes, if uh, people could see here, come to your office, they would see how, um, you know, with great care you've uh, uh, kept, you know, what others would call it clutter, you know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, it's, it's such affection. I see everything is marked, everything is, you know, has a place. Exactly. So, uh, you're being generous. <laughs> So this is when I came, you know, when I was speaking to Martin and uh, we sort of um, were uh, deciding as to what I should do. I, I, In fact, I first went to, when I came, I went to the Gallery of Guelph where I met Shauna, who's the head curator. Right. And I thought, you know, I'd even, you know, do something, you know, like a curatorial thing or something. But then when we were brainstorming, uh, I said, why not do something with photography that the photographer I am and uh, something what the campus has to offer in terms of the spaces, in terms of the equipment, in terms of the ideas and in terms of uh, uh, freedom to express and explore. So we built on that and that's how, you know, and we all collaborated actually, you know, as you know, Susan, you were, you know, stellar support source of strength for me. So. That's how this uh, exhibition, All I See, is framed. And that's how actually the title got sealed. Right. When he, he was showing me around and uh, I said, Martin, please don't apologize. I see, all I see is frames. That's as I said, Martin, this is it. This is the exhibition I'm going to shoot with the uh, equipment that Sopam has, you know, uh, the photography department. And so that it's a great lesson for students also that, you yes. know, you don't need big things to make something big. It's a, something beautiful you can make wherever you are with whatever you have and the best equipment is the equipment in your hand as people say. So. I'd love to know more about your background in art and uh, you mentioned you were a painter Yes. and so how did that all come about for you? How did you get involved in the arts? Yeah, um, I was always, I think uh, my father, uh, he had this, he could sketch beautifully. He yes. was not an architect, he was an engineer, but his, his his works were like beautiful pieces. One could just frame him, you know, frame them in hand. I feel that I might have um, taken after him in this respect. And when I was in school, I was always, you know, I represented my school, my class and painting and won, you know, competitions and things. But in India, you know, this, this is like a hobby, you know, you don't really uh, take it up as a profession or something. So mm -hmm. it's either a teacher or a doctor or an engineer or an architect thing. So I actually... Um, I'm a trained uh, nutritionist, you know, I studied nutrition wow. and, and uh, but once you get married to a diplomat, then you can't work because then you can't get uh, go anywhere with a diplomatic visa, you know, you have to have a work visa. Right. And this is, I'm talking, you know, 30, you know, three decades ago, things were very different and difficult then. So I'll tell you a very interesting thing. This is, I'm posted in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Yes. And my husband for about um, six to eight months was Shah Affairs. And I get an invite, a luncheon invite uh, from the Thai uh, ambassador's wife, uh, 10 a.m. So I asked my office to check. I said, listen, check, you know, luncheon at 10 a.m. I couldn't see brunch. And I was like, no, 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 ma'am, lunch at 10 a.m. Then, of course, I wear my nice sari, my pearls and everything, and I dress up and I go. So all the diplomatic, you know, heads of uh, mission spouses were there. 
and uh, we all were given an you know a paint you know material to paint and we could just sit outside and paint whatever Wonderful. so i was i was super excited like yeah. okay you know got into it immediately and painted something and just then you know went inside for some thai food right and this um, thai master's wife of course very senior i mean i was very young and she comes to me and she loved the work that i did and said listen young girl you're not going to attend all these uh, you know coffee um, mornings you're going to take this seriously oh, so she wonderful. says you study here i make i'll make sure that you do and uh, she actually did she passed on her you know i you know learned from the masters there in addis <sighs> and the cultural scene in Addis Ababa it was just amazing outstanding artists that have gone there uh, gone gone out of um, uh, Ethiopia um, so that's where it all began and in fact i trained very hard for two years three years there and did my first solo exhibition which was sponsored by Adians France there that's where my journey began and there was oh. no looking back and then i went to uh, london central st martins i studied there and uh, then the exhibitions kept happening and i knew you know as an artist is so interesting you know uh, your mediums intersect you know you know i always knew that i'd somewhere intersect with photography yeah. so it's like uh, you know it's i call it flirting with photography you're married to painting with flirting with photography but i think i'll keep both <laughs> so well, i can see the painter in your photographs right uh there's a sense of light and color and even gesture in your uh, in the photographs that have shallow depth of field yes. and where you use um slower shutter speeds yes. it's very clear there's yes. a very uh very pronounced sense of painting for me when i look at those yes susan i think you the first uh, to point me uh, point out that to me that uh, you you could see that as your as a photographer yeah. yourself and uh, and we i'm i'm a I'm a people's person, and that translates yes. into my work. Yes, and uh, like a portrait painting, also it was figurative, and uh, and why I like photography, or what I like about photography, is that it's um, interactive. Yes, uh, and I like the person you know I yes. am with, and uh, I could. and you're right i just zoom into whatever i'm doing that's where the shallow depth of field comes and i feel uh, yeah every person is like this beautiful image this beautiful book you could do so much and read so much into it the person not giving also gives so much not realizing well what's striking from to me about your work as a new photographer relatively new yes. to the medium true, true. is that you actually move in close when you're photographing people yes. and that's one of the things that for new photographers struggle with most they'll usually stay back further than than they realize they are because they're not quite comfortable interacting yes. with the subject but you have absolutely no trouble with that see that's the advantage advantage of my um, i think i could say age as well and plus also that i'm very comfortable with people Oh, you sure are. Yes. I and I think uh, somewhere the person on the other side also um, experiences that that yes. uh, and then gives more than even I require. Yes. They feel comfort in my company as well and not really very uh, intimidated or anything and they come across uh, as easy uh, collaborators I could say you know they it's a collaborative work you know if I'm doing a portrait of somebody you know I couldn't do anything without that somebody so Yeah so you mentioned collaboration and uh, one thing that happened uh, was you collaborated with the technicians that you mentioned here uh, in Studio Art so you worked with uh, Rachel Forsey and know. Nathan Salawanchik and you also worked with Anna Gabby Trotz True. Uh, so what was that experience like for you and of course with uh, your leadership and vision uh, susan i think uh, magic happened oh, as soon I mean, as you returned <laughs> i didn't mean to say that of course <laughs> <laughs> when you no. said leadership i thought immediately about martin yes of martin of yeah, course martin, martin and you both yeah. you know because martin was the one who said you know let susan come and then we begin yeah. Yeah. and when we spoke about it this is where it all began and uh, i actually uh, the amount of support i got here the amount of encouragement and inspiration seeing you all i this exhibition all i see is frames is uh, uh, i would definitely call it a collaborative uh, 
collaboration between uh, Sofam and me, and uh, because uh, we did it all together. Yeah. And it really is a lovely community in this whole building. And of course, we think the fourth floor is the very best. I mean, our community, which is where photography resides. Susan, <laughs> I, I see that. I feel that. I mean, look, I mean, we are having a lovely conversation with a, and having a slice of pie too, you yes. know. <laughs> where do you have that, you know? It's like the podcast and pies, eh? Yeah. So That's wonderful. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. And... Um, I mean, this is, I mean, you're mindful of this and uh, you you probably are an inspiration. I've seen in your class and uh, students go out, uh, step out of their class uh, with an extra bit of confidence that they came in with. I, I have a feeling. Uh, well, Rochelle and I, too, have tell the students at the very beginning that the photography spaces are safe spaces yeah. where they can feel safe and where they can be themselves and where they can develop their own identity and also their own community. We tell them, you know, until you've made a photograph that you want to carry around with you on your phone or in your pocket, just look at it every once in a while because you love it so much. Yes. Um, you know, at that moment, that's when you'll be a photographer for life. And I think that you know something about that too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought in the safe place bit because uh, my professor used to say uh, that photography is not an activity. The minute yeah. that you take a camera or a cell phone or um, anything that takes, a, it takes an image or captures an image, it's not activity, you know. It is a responsibility, you know. You right. have to be mindful of what you're taking, where you're taking, whom you're taking. You right. know, that I think you've even brought that, uh, uh, given that uh, to your students as well as uh, yeah. I can see that, you know, they're quite mindful of all that. But coming back, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, photographers, photography and everything, yeah. main thing is the viewfinder, you know, when I was talking about yes. by exhibition, yeah. uh, there were people who were saying, you know, there were many mundane shots, but I feel mundane is what yeah. makes the extraordinary and you have to see that mundane, you start off, that's the reference yes. point, you start off there and uh, we, you know, people see with the naked eye, we see through viewfinder and yeah. what I saw was, you know, what people might uh, cross by every single day but I took pictures where they didn't even not get noticed or noticed mm -hmm. coming back to viewfinder that is where we create art and I saw an exhibition you also did on viewfinders <laughs> yes which is all stunning all I see is frames or all I see is viewfinders viewfinders <laughs> yes absolutely. which is exactly and viewfinders matter that's where the magic happens yeah. Yeah. and you might have the same camera might have same viewfinder but it, it's like a viewpoint, it changes from person to person. But one thing I got to say that I found, I found you to be a kindred spirit right away was when you came into a photograph in my office and you you lay down on the floor to yes. get the right viewpoint. Yes. And that is just a dedication right there. Yes. And the photographs, some of the photographs you made were also quite abstract. You know, I'm yes. thinking about this exactly. roll of green tape that you photographed yes. um, where it was very difficult to tell what it was, yes. but the green in that photograph was so incredibly striking. Yes. And I believe uh, you mentioned to me that your first works when you were painting were abstract as well? Uh, no, actually somebody yeah. asked me that what uh, I, I, my first works, yes, they started with a little bit of an abstract, but then I went into, you know, really uh, figurative art, people oh. and everything. Oh, that makes I, sense. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I did an exhibition in South Africa, which was called Risky Dreams. It was a mixed media. Oh. And uh, I used to just take shots and then uh, play with the colors, printer's ink and other colors. And uh, oh. it was uh, an exhibition sponsored by Mele and they took my show to, uh, from Johannesburg. Uh, they sponsored and they took it to Tokyo. <sighs> and it was... My father had just passed away then and for me, I think art is also healing. That's why, you know, yes. people teach, and, you know, therapeutic art and stuff. That exhibition helped me heal and I could really yeah. cry out my tears in, you know, yeah. in those paintings. And it was, I think, one of my best works. It was dedicated to women of South Africa and uh, everybody just felt it, you nice. know. Yeah. You, if you feel something, you yes. know, I think my, the artist's job is done. 
either the voice or the vision. So uh, I'm very uh, fond of, I mean, it's very close to my heart because I felt, you know, it's, it reminds me of my dad and how it helped me heal. And uh, again, women, you know, very strongly about women that how they stepped out every single morning and to make their dreams come true and which was all, you know, for their family, for their children, to give them a better life or mm. even a single meal that day. So that's where it all began and that's when I knew that it's going to be photography. And coming back to abstraction, you're right, somebody asked me that, you know, uh, what change did you see in yourself? Yeah. I realized I, here when I was, you know, I did, I was on this project and shooting, taking pictures, I have seen a little shift to abstraction. Yes. I, I think uh, reaching to abstraction is not also maturity I feel you don't really dis an abstraction is the proportionate distortion of reality right so I think if I've if I've done that I'm do doing that it's that means I've enriched I mean with whatever I've received here it has been a very enriching experience and I think inspiration from photographers like you you know I think you also lot into abstraction mm -hmm. with your works and you know I've seen it's it's beautiful and for me the transformation is not really a hundred percent but I see a little shift you know I yes. because my camera automatically you know just zooms in or focuses on you know this green that you said I just had to take it yes and in little little uh, uh, you know frames also I see meaning you know that yes. might be meaningless for me it was it was circle of healing or circle of uh, what you call here that you do in the or teaching as well you know yes. it's all about you know th that circle that was very meaningful for me mm -hmm. so in abstraction I see meaning in current stage of my life I think uh, post COVID I think that's the and this is my first big exhibition after COVID yeah. and I've come out I think uh, had a very bad case of COVID and I I think this uh, artist 2.0 is more mature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also I think people should not forget also. I was in hospital. Uh, I had the worst case of Delta. Uh, 12 days in yeah. hospital, oxygen, you know, it's mask, support powerful. and everything. So I think every day should be enjoyed, valued. And yes. that is the big uh, takeaway that live your life every yes. single day at a time. Yes, you know, and live it to fullest to do what you want to and everything is possible. I mean, this exhibition I did, I didn't bring any fancy camera with the fanciest of, you know, of lenses. I said, at least when students, it will be a great example for them when they pick that camera up that somebody did an exhibition out of that. Exactly. It was just, I think uh, these past three weeks gave me mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity to think beyond what I thought I was good at. Yes. Yeah. You know, hats off to you guys and the teamwork. You know, like you baked a huge pie for everybody. <laughs> it's a celebrate <laughs> celebration of what we did together. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, again, that comes down to family. You know, feeling like we're working towards a common yes. cause. It's very True. exciting. It's very tiring, but at the same time, it's so exciting to see it all done. Going to the opening of your work, looking at these wonderful photographs was truly, truly inspiring and uh, photography is very much a hybrid medium at the moment in the art world where it intersects with painting yes. and sculpture and drawing yes. and time-based media. Um, I see that in the work of the people moving. I really get a sense that this is a storyboard for a video project or film. Yes. And uh, we start to see that quite a bit and certainly there is that language in your work already but that's a very contemporary way I think yes. of thinking yes. about photography and um, it's, it's exciting to see it move in that direction. Um, I must say too that many of your influences um, although you're not shooting on film like they are, um, you're definitely influenced by their compositions. And I yes. see that extremely clearly in your work. Your yes. compositions are very classic. Yes. Yeah. Um, probably it's still, you know, you just think of that, you know, yeah. you, it's just because course, you've been, you know, every day when you worship yes. them, you know, this, you, they, be, they <laughs> yes. become part of you. Yeah. But then I think there comes a point uh, when, you, you know, you sort of, uh, that 
what you say is you know there comes a point where you sort of not really deviate but you know separate you yes know? that's yes. when you sa- you know that okay this period is over now you know <laughs> this is, but i i'm still in that period i'm enjoying yes. that period rather Enjoy i love it, it yeah yes. because i can see that you know maybe it's the era i have not felt or uh, lived in so i'm trying to sort of mimic it through my works or something like that but it will you know when you watch documentaries and you see how photo you know photographers you know they had they supposed to be having a very uh, glamorous life moving around with you know uh, the cream of society and top models and people and everything but actually it's not it's sort of you yeah. know they seem to look like but it's a lot of hard work to get that perfect picture and they're also lying on the floor right <laughs> <laughs> they're also lying on the floor perfect yeah. picture yes, i mean the angles, that's the reality absolutely and uh, you know yeah. you know that's what i love about photographers yes. is they can go out and get so involved with what they're doing that you actually do what you have to do to get the picture and that isn't very glamorous at all but no, it's so no. satisfying when you do get the picture right yeah. that's the part i love about it yeah. it's it's pure love you know and the more i think you get into it the more you start loving every bit of it uh, and i i personally feel you know the day i hold my camera is the most wonderful beautiful empowering feeling that you know it changes it changes me i'm really curious um so you only had about 3 weeks to produce this exhibition this uh beautiful exhibition that we celebrated on friday at its opening Um, I'm wondering uh, if you could talk a little bit about the decisions that you made. You took thousands of pictures and in the end there were I believe something like 25 photographs in the final exhibition. So, can you talk a little bit about how you made decisions to get to the point you got to because that must have been incredibly difficult. Yes, because uh, a lot of pictures I I was very disciplined in my practice because a I knew, you know, uh, time wasn't on my side i had a very yes. short period <laughs> yes. of time i had had to make uh, the best use of that so th- i knew uh, i had taken them like you do some test shots i knew what i wanted yes. because through my uh, you know using my uh, phone i use uh, use and saw the results when i saw that i said these are where uh, images i want and then i took the camera yes. for high res uh, mm-hmm. pictures hence you know it's all about whatever i did some i saw differently some my trained i saw very naturally yes so and it's a uh, you know and i compiled everything together to put up this and the choosing was very hard there were of course as you mentioned tons of pictures but to choose what to choose so two things you know a what you print that has to look good and print as well and also what would look good as a mural and what would and of course uh, you helped me out there as well to sort of we could decide and then we had uh, shona also come in uh, for a bit to curate that so i think there uh, i was happy with the choices that uh, you know yes. it was a good combination of people and places and a good essay and i loved the gen, uh, the gen z one yes. which was which showed you know which was uh, you know which was about the university about the students it's this place where you come you dream big you flourish there's movement there's life uh, their dreams you know everything and you just you you can, you can feel that that one is a really um accurate and i depiction think of, depiction of university life because there are about how many small images are on that mural something like 16 maybe yes 16 yeah. and uh, it depicts uh, students walking in and out of classes and through beams of light it's it's a really vibrant and uh, a uh, mural with lots of movement in it because yes. we can almost feel the movement of students moving between classes and be- between buildings it's um it's one i hope that gets hung in the university in a very so. prominent I, space yes, yes i think so it's probably because i think the president was quite keen uh, on that one so i hope uh, you know because that's a very strong uh, um, message also that uh, yeah. here is where everything happens 
Yeah, yes. and also the painter in me, I wanted that effect yes. to happen yes. also. And the sense of color was just yes. extraordinarily on the first one that I described. This is it's so beautiful. Just a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow yeah. in this darkness. It's it's extremely effective. Yeah. See, use of I color. come from a country of colors, uh, yeah. Susan. You know, yes, color plays a lot of importance. Uh, uh, from where I come from, India, and uh, uh, since growing up, you know, certain we celebrate seasons also with colors. You know, like spring is uh, with you know we'll have spring colors. Mm-hmm. We'll wear yellow just to celebrate that. And now is the time of uh, Diwali and um, you know festivals happening. So all bright red saris and colors so and lovely. art. You know, art art forms. You know, especially the. Um, uh, tribal art, the indigenous art, you know, they, they've, it's not that, you know, they're not educated or they're poor, they don't, you know, feel, mm-hmm. they're all very creative. Yes. Most beautiful uh, murals you'll see, you know, or fresco, you know, you'll see in villages. Uh, Madhubani art, for instance, they'll just say some chalk and, you know, on cow dung uh, spattered walls, that you'll, you know, find art there, which mm-hmm. uh, uh, it all starts from there, you know. Yes. And then uh, during festivals, they we even draw in, fr- uh, in front of our homes just to welcome guests uh, with uh, uh, powders, colored powder, flowers, everywhere. It's it's a sign of, uh, you know, you're welcoming uh, not only just the season, but the person, the, uh, the festival. It's just celebration yes. and uh, decoration and art decorating uh, with art forms is part of a celebration and colors as well and then it starts uh, all from there. Yeah, speaking of India, you reminded me that uh, one of the really interesting things about you is that you do live in India and you've also traveled so extensively yeah. um, and I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how uh, your culture and the other, other cultures you have experienced has influenced you as an artist. Yes, uh, you know, I was, uh, of course, uh, you know, we have, I'm very, very, as an Indian, I'm very proud of my cultural heritage, rich yes. cultural heritage. Yes. Uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, the country I come from. Yeah. And uh, we embrace and respect all cultures. And uh, rather, uh, growing up, I remember, you know, we celebrated everything, still do. And um, as as a wife, as a spouse of a diplomat, I've traveled everywhere. And the reason I'm comfortable uh, with everyone everywhere is uh, because I feel, you know, the universe is my home. You know, I can just uh, travel, meet anybody, talk to anybody. Uh, it's perhaps perhaps also of my Indian upbringing. Yes. You know, that has played an important role, you know, because we never segregated anybody, you know, it was all inclusive. You yes. know, we lived in a, uh, you know, with together with everybody, just be it joint family or where the campus you're living in, you know, you not, I mean, if you meet your friend, you have to meet the friend's mom, dad, cousins, <laughs> so and if you eat, you eat all together. So this is what, uh, you know, those are the values, Indian values we've grown up with and we carry those values uh, wherever we go. And of course, then we are open to being influenced by other cultures as well. I think that's that's it. I think uh, the other person automatically feels very comfortable, and uh, I've definitely experienced that with you. Yeah, uh, and yes, I made pie, but you also made rice for me. Yes. So. <laughs> so I was saying it's good. Could be pie, could pie pulao, and podcast. Yeah, I just did the rice today. Yeah. So yes, it's of so course, wonderful. India plays a big role. Uh, I mean, in art forms. Um, we have great photographers also coming out of India, women yes. photographers, and uh, they all create from soul, you know. Yes. Of course, we look through the lens and, you know, help of our eyes, but what we create is, you know, what are, what churns our souls. Yes. And that's being very, very Indian. So, that's, yeah. And that we carry it everywhere. So, what I leave here, you know, the the works that I've done, really done from my heart, you know, without any agenda. It's, I was, you know, very passionate about and disciplined about what I was doing and I did it and couldn't have done it without you guys. Oh, that's so nice of you. (laughs) Thank you uh, so much for saying that. Um, We will, we will miss you. 
quite it, terribly. Yeah, so oh, it's, we miss, it's been a I'll bright miss light too. coming in here. Oh sure. my God. Absolutely. It is so, so sweet. And I look forward to reciprocating this hospitality when you all bring Sofum to India and experience <laughs> our rich culture and heritage. So you're going to, everybody enjoys India. So you're going to come and do that. Oh, thank you so much. We'll have to do. We'll have Absolutely. to do, irrespective. On that good note, I think, Susan, thank you so much. And thank you, Aparna. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful trip back uh, and uh, continue to take pictures. Yes. Once yes. you get back, you have a unique vision of yes. the world around you. Yes. And uh, it'll be wonderful to see what you do next. Oh. Waiting for your installation as well. So we'll sort of touch base and keep each other informed Absolutely. of our practices and exhibitions. We will do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Aparna Swarup and Susan Dobson. And thanks to those listening. You can follow Aparna Swarup on X. Her handle is at Aparna Swarup, And on Instagram, her handle is at Aparna Swarup 9. Special thanks to Nathan Salawanchik in the School of Fine Art and Music for his technical support that made this podcast possible. To learn more about the Global Thought Leader in Residence Program or the Canada India Research Centre, please visit canadaindiaresearch.ca or stay up to date by following us on social media at circle underscore Guelph. Thank you for listening and goodbye. <laughs>